How Nicholas II Affected the Russian Revolution by Paige Ball Nicholas was born on May 18, 1868, in Pushkin, Russia. He excelled in history and foreign languages, but couldn't understand politics and economics. His father also failed to provide him with much training in state affairs. He inherited the throne when his father, Alexander III, died in 1894. That same year, he married Alexandra, a German princess and granddaughter of Queen Victoria. Together, they had four daughters and one son. His son was a hemophiliac, which means the blood doesn't clot. Russia was in turmoil when he got the throne. He was stubborn, close-minded, and traditional. He hated confrontation, he was evasive, and he went off to the front line in World War I, leaving his wife and Grigory Rasputin to rule the country. His people had no money, no food, and no fuel to heat their house. They were angry and did not want to be in that war. The war ended, but Russia still was not peaceful. When large demonstrations and riots broke out, the Tsar created a parliament, but later abolished it when it got rid of too much of his power. When the Russian Imperial Army was demobilized, most of the troops and even some of the generals joined the Red Army and the Bolsheviks. The Red Army fought against the Tsar to make Russia a communist country. Britain, Italy, Germany, and the U.S. wanted to keep the monarchy in place, so they fought for the White Army. Crowds found protesting were shot down by the Tsar's army, but this only created more riots and strikes. The royal family was arrested by the Bolsheviks and were kept as prisoners in the small town of Yekaterinburg in the spring of 1918. Nicholas was forced to abdicate his throne, but the White Army still fought to liberate them. On July 17, 1918, the Tsar, Tsaritsa, their four daughters, one son, cook, maid, and all their waiters were led down to a storeroom. Vladimir Lenin had ordered them killed, so eleven men with guns entered the room and shot them all to pieces. The only two survivors of the first onslaught of bullets was Alexei, the heir, and a maid. The maid was quickly stabbed to death, and Alexei was shot twice in the head. War still raged, but the era of the Russian monarchy was over. If Nicholas had been willing to give up some of his power at the start, a lot of lives could have been saved, including the his and his family's. He was a hopeless ruler to start with, but if he would have listened to his ministers, things might have turned out better for him. Russia might not have been a communist country if the people would have had more faith in their czar. Overall, I don't think it could have gotten away with no lives being lost. If their last Tsar had been a competent ruler, it's safe to say that Russia would be a totally different country nowadays. And that's the end. Thanks for listening.